I'm like, oh, maybe we need to move the table back a bit. Yeah, yeah. Hello, uh, we're live streaming. Uh, we're a little bit late. Uh, we're gonna move the table that way. Uh, sorry, I'm instructing people that are in the room as well. Um, we're just gonna give ourselves a little more space here in this room. Perfect, perfect. I have some more space to move around back here. Um, we were just doing intros in the room. Um, I don't know if you guys want to continue that. We can, we can. They probably won't hear it. It's fine. I'll give them a nice view of skates instead. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, I'm Georgia, teacher. And what am I? I'm Vaughn. I'm excited to learn about the three types of talks that you're going to Hey, about. exciting. Hi, Terry. I think we've met before. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think the same. I have another press kit, but I didn't bring mine. So, um, yeah, so I'm interested to see kind of the different. Cool. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Sounds great. So, like I said, I, I said this. Oh, yeah. Sorry, man. So just quickly. <laughs> I'm standing here like a creep otherwise. <laughs> Hi, Bobby. She's here, and I'm going to watch the TV later. So, maybe taking pictures and that sort of thing so we can build some reels and content if you're okay with that so i'll let you have yay thanks for being here bobby that's awesome that's awesome um and we have daniela who uh helps us out all the time with social media stuff um all right so we'll get started um i i figured i would start with my toolbox uh and just show you guys what i have in my toolbox to begin with um so i actually have two separate toolboxes so this is the one that i bring with me to practice all the time um, and then this is like the big one that uh, I have at home for like bigger projects. Can you tell them to shut up? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So in my in my little guy, I have some hockey tape, uh, which is great for it. like you lose some Velcro on any of your uh, any of your pads, you can hockey tape it up. Mouth guard because I play roller derby. Selfie stick because it's always fun when you're roller skating. Um, I have a very specific Allen key that is for one of the trucks here. So this particular truck takes this particular Allen key. So I have this to adjust the toe stop um, and a tri tool. So a tri tool, uh, this is like the handiest tool that you can have for skating. Yes, ah, yes, classic. Everyone's got it. Well, it's got everything you need, right? You can adjust your wheel nuts. You can adjust your truck. You can adjust. Um, most of the toe stops on these nylon plates, um, not those nylon plates. <laughs> amazing, amazing. So that's my little tiny toolkit, pretty simple. It's just uh, the things that I've realized as a roller skater that I want to have with me at every single practice um, because I have had, you know, gear explode on me and stuff. So big one, what's, what's, what else is in the big one? There's going to be lots of uh, doubles in here. So I've got some a little filing tool. And what I use this for is when I'm cleaning bearings, well, I'll pull out a bearing so I can show you. So when I'm cleaning bearings, you have to actually take that little teeny red part out and then clean out any of the dirt that are between the bearings. Um, and you do this with a cleaning solution, let it all dry and then put it back in. And these little, these little guys are just a little easier to get in there and, and get this little thing out without bending it. Because it is like show on the camera is like a little tiny piece of metal so you want to keep it as flat as you can when you're pulling it out or putting it back in you can use it a straight pin and it's awkward ah uh, yeah better. yeah um i know people like dirty debbie harry from down in california highly recommends dental tools like so she has like just the little like <laughs> things that you pick your teeth with uh to pick apart her roller skates yeah i'm not sure where she got them from i don't know i don't know. try amazon i feel like you can get everything um, so I have piles of bearings that I haven't cleaned, um, which we're not going to do tonight, but we could do it another night, perhaps. Um, it is a little bit more of an involved process than like popping out, popping off wheels or whatever. Uh, I keep some stuff to clean just debris out. Like every time you take, every time I take my wheels off, there is so much gunk around the wheels. So just stuff to clean that out. Um, some random, you know, like hammer, just all the average stuff. Um, I have an abundance of skate tools that I don't need because they just keep piling up. So all of the different kinds. <laughs> These ones are kind of handy uh, if you're just going somewhere uh, like with a with a fanny pack or whatever, because it's just your wheel nuts. 
which is, you know, all you really need at most places. I've got spares of like wheel nuts and pivot caps and old wheel nuts. Um, so just anything that I might need that skate related ends up piling up in here. Lots of spare parts, lots of tools. Uh, this is my favorite thing. My favorite ad though is, is for cleaning the bearings, getting that something sharp to get that guy out of there. So that's my toolkit. I am going to just leave the try tool out because it's the handiest. Um, and I'll show you guys the three different trucks next. Unless you have questions, do you have questions about skate tools or anything? I, can I ask a quick question about the bearings? Yeah. Popping up that red mm -hmm. in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We could actually pop it out of that one. That one is very dry, I noticed. Um, so bearings usually have lube on them. So that's probably just been sitting in the container for some years in my toolbox. So like you just take the sharp end and you just really gently sort of get, oh yeah, it's coming apart a little, this one already, so it's quite old. Just gotta get in there. No matter what, it is a little bit awkward and I'm always like, am I gonna break it? And so you just gotta push it and then pop it out. Where's my camera? There it is. And then, yeah. So, I mean, you can see there's not too much gunk in there, but I would still, uh, like, if you're cleaning bearings, uh, you just get some cleaning solution. There's some really cool ones where it's just like a washing machine and you drop them in and you sort of like turn it around uh, and then you leave it to dry. Um, and then once it's dry, we have, oh, also in my toolkit, which I must have missed. I know it's here, uh, some speed cream. So like I said, this bearing's really dry right now. Bearings, usually you want some lube. So if you've cleaned a bearing or if you just have bearings that have been in for a while and they don't seem to have a lot more, you can get uh, just a little bit of speed cream, bone speed cream. It was like three or four bucks. Then you just put a drop or two. So when I'm done cleaning them, let them dry, put a drop or two of this in and then put this red shield right back on top. And it's nice and smooth run again. Um, and for popping it back in, this is where you gotta be careful about not bending it. And so I use the other end, just really gently against something hard, pop it back in there. And you just gotta try to put pressure around the whole thing. I think it's in. Oh, and yeah, you can tell if you don't quite have it in there because it doesn't spin freely, right? So it's not quite all the way in, got the pop. And it's probably not spinning also because it's quite dry, so. But anyways, that is bearings, taking apart, putting them back together. Beauty. Awesome. Um, what's next? Oh. oh, I mean, if you're skating inside once a week, like maybe once a year, okay. right? Uh, if you skate outside a lot or if you skate outside and it's wet out, I would say do it right after. When it, so like if you skate in and your wheels get wet, clean them out, dry them out, add some speed cream, uh, cause that'll keep the bearings from getting any rust or just, um, when it's wet, the water tends to draw like little bits of sand in there and stuff too. So you might actually like after skating in the rain, if you're cleaning your bearings, you might actually be pulling some sand or something out of there too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have, a very bad habit of like just buying new bearings. So like I have like three sets in here that I should just clean because then I would have new bearings. Um, but it is so easy, right? Like you just pop into roller go and buy a new set. Um, but like they're expensive, they're 50 bucks. Um, so like you can make them last quite a bit longer if you take them apart and clean them pretty frequently. Um, I heard that you can clean them with just like 99% alcohol. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay. Totally, so totally. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, rubbing alcohol is a little cheaper. Um, I wouldn't recommend rubbing alcohol for cleaning any of the wheel surfaces oh. themselves, uh, just because it can start to deteriorate. So like, especially uh, rubbing alcohol doesn't do nice things to the softer wheels. You, you'll end up starting to eat away it. Yeah. Um, I think you yeah. can baby wipes. Oh, baby wipes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I mean. They'll do a baby's butt, they're probably. They're probably yeah, <laughs> interesting. Yeah, I've never thought of that, but yeah, 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 totally. Like, I mean, that's what I use this for. And this is my favorite thing. It's, uh, you know, when you stay in hotels and they have the like shoe shine mitt, that's all this is. But this is my favorite for like cleaning gunk off of wheels or like, uh, I'll do that next actually. Uh, I'll show you the trucks first and then I'll just change a set of wheels. Uh, Cause probably some of those wheels are gonna have a bunch of gunk that we need to clean out anyways. Let's put the toolkit off to the side. 
that stuff out. So these are uh, the skates that you rent from here. Um, very, very similar trucks to all of the trucks. So like what's gonna be common about these trucks is the way that they are put together. Um, so it's very much like a skateboard truck. Um, leaning is what causes movement um, there. Uh, so this is your kingpin that goes in. Underneath are some cushions. And so these you can change out softer or harder. Um, I think Lulu went over that in the workshop uh, that she did about adjusting trucks. So I won't spend too much time there. Um, but yeah, it is, if you're feeling a little stiff in, in the motion there, talk to Roller Girl about some different cushions perhaps. Um, and this kind of truck has um, the bell toe stop that you adjust with a screwdriver. So it's just a flathead screwdriver. You can't get too much adjustment on these kind of toe stops, unfortunately. Um, so that's the only downside when you're using these bell toe stops. They're not as common though. Like I don't, I don't see any of them here tonight. So. What are they made of? Are they made of like kind of? Stuff? Yeah, it's the same kind of like polyurethane. Yeah, it's made of the same stuff. It is just like a very different shape. Um, they're much cheaper because it is just a screw that goes through the piece of rubber. So like the ones that we have, I'll show you my big fuck off toe stops. Um, they're a little more complicated to make because you have like an aluminum stem that's attached to plastic. So you have some physics involved in holding that together instead of just a screw going right through the, through the um, toe stop. Um, so I'll just pick up these ones next. These are my favorite trucks. I got them this year. Um, so these are the Venus plates. Um, they're beautiful. They're aluminum. Uh, they're very light. I love them a lot. They were expensive. Um, yes. And I got a custom Solaris boot. So these are my, these are my, uh, skate anniversary skates. Um, I celebrated 15 years of roller, playing roller derby this year. So this was my little gift to myself is these beauties. Thank you, roller girl. Um, so what's different about these guys? Um, they're really reactive. Um, so the way that, so the way that your truck goes into your pivot cap and into your plate is, is really what gives you that range of motion here. Uh, and the aluminum on aluminum is just, it's just better and smoother. So like what it feels like when I'm skating, skating in one of these nylon plates compared to this is like when I'm skating on the Venus plates, I just have to think about where I'm going. And it just feels like it goes there. It was such a difference for me. Um, so if you're looking for things to spend money on, highly recommend those plates. But these are not terrible plates either. And this is what comes on, you know, most of the skates out there. You have a nice nylon plate. Same deal with kingpins and cushions. Um, the toe stop goes on a little different. So on this Venus plate, we had, I think I showed it earlier, we have that little um, Allen key is how you adjust. So basically you're tightening this. and it basically acts like a vice to hold that in there. Um, the way that this toe stop goes on is a little different. You need the wrench from your tri-tool or I think I have a, a regular. You can sometimes get it. I think there's one, yeah. So, you, oh, that one is quite bent. <laughs> Anyways, uh, a wrench that looks like this uh, or a wrench that looks like this. This is what we're looking for. Um, and so basically you've got a little, a little nut down there that you have to loosen and tighten. So you loosen it off here. So we're just gonna loosen it a little bit and then we can unscrew this to the height that we'd like, adjust, um, and then tighten it back up. So that's how those work. Questions about trucks? I'm gonna get more specific into the wheels and toe stops next. Very. Ah, okay, okay, sweet. So I'll just go changing a pair of wheels. Have you guys changed your wheels yet? Yes, no, no, some no's, some yeses. Pretty simple, pretty simple, right? So you got your tri-tool. Um, you just unscrew your wheel nut, lefty loosey, righty tidy. Um, so that's really simple, comes off. So we have a wheel and a nut that holds it on to this guy right here. Um, what I like to do when I'm putting them back on, so that's how easy it is, right? You unscrew the nut, you take the wheel off, you put the new wheel on, you put the nut back on and tighten it. Um, so when you're tightening it back on, I like to actually tighten it all the way so that it doesn't move. So I'm using the wrong one there. So I like to tighten it all the way down. So right. There you can see my wheel isn't moving. And then I just 
to find the perfect tightness. I just do a little eighth of a turn until it's running nice and smooth. So I did about three little mini turns until this was, I don't think you can see that. Anyway, it's rolling smoothly. Change the wheel, easy. Redo that seven more times. <laughs> also, do you guys have questions about wheels? I mean, generally speaking, um, the softer they are, the slower they will go, but it'll feel nice if you're going over bumps. And the harder they are, uh, it'll, you'll feel those bumps more, but hard wheels are great for a place like this where you might want to do some spins, that kind of thing. Um, that's called durometer. I don't remember the durometer of any of the wheels in front of me, but Google can tell you the durometer of your wheels. These are 78. I think you're right there. Yep. And I know that I like the halo oranges here and the yellows at another venue that I skated yeah. at, but I don't remember the geometer of either of them. So color's easier to remember for me. Um, all right. Wheel size. Ah, uh, yeah, you can go really small or really big. From like really like wider, like these are quite wide. Yeah. And then also, yeah, the So diameter. Um, it's about speed. The bigger they are, kind of the slower you'll go, right? Because it takes more revolutions to go around. But that can be good outside too. So you'll see uh, gummy wheels that are quite a bit bigger than this. Uh, I think they're called road hogs, or there's some other ones too that are clear like this that are just big and beefy. And that's for skating out on the rough asphalt and, and not feeling it so much in all of your joints. Um, because really, like you put hard wheels on your skates and then you try to skate on rough asphalt and it's just vibration. Like that's all you feel. So uh, the bigger and gummier they are, the less of that that you get. Um, you see smaller wheels being used for things like dance or some of the like more aggressive skate park. Once you get into the, to the more fancy skate park trick, you'll, your wheels will get smaller because they get out of your way a bit more, right? Um, like... Yeah, like some of the skate park wheels will be quite a bit narrower because that cuts off all of this that you're not having to worry about catching on the guard or catching on uh, on the ramp or whatever. Yeah, um, let's take that wheel off again and I'll just pop out and pop in some bearings. Um, so you don't actually need special tools to change bearings, um, but I have one special tool that I really like because uh, it was very cheap and easy to get. I think I got it from Roller Girl. I just get it everything from Roller Girl. Oh no, I've never seen one like that, but similar, so similar. Mine's just a quick little, it's just a little aluminum guy. And so I'm gonna have to pop these bearings out first. So I usually just use a screwdriver, but you can also use just the like stick end of this. And basically you're just going in and I mean, if you want to look in the side, you can see that there is a bearing on either side and there's a little bit of space in the middle of them in there. So you're just aiming for that space in the middle to sort of pop this guy out. Oh yeah, it's going to be hard now. Oop. And then it's much easier to get the second one out because you can sort of see where you're aiming and what you're having to push out. So yeah, I just use that end or the screwdriver. So there, the bearings are out. So that's what a wheel looks like with no bearings. Um, if we're using this little tool, it's really simple. We go bearing, wheel, and then use this, this little guy and push down to put them together. And so that's one side in, and then same thing, other side. So you want the, that, that red shield to be facing out the side where you can see the bearings facing in on both of them. Um, and some bearings are different and you won't be able to see the bearings, but there should be, if the shield isn't red, it should be obvious which side, yeah. I think all bearings, it's pretty obvious which side needs to be facing out. Um, so I'll just show you how easy it can be to pop them into. You don't need that tool. Um, gummy wheels especially are a little easier because they're a little, little flexier. You can just pop it in with your thumb. So I just pop that in with my thumb and it's not in as tight as it can go, but I also know that when I put it onto my truck, I'm gonna tighten it all the way down with the nut on top of it so it'll push it in any more that it needs to go in. Um, I do have the tool, so I'm just gonna use it. But you don't necessarily need that. I've also seen people use like, like even just, just as long as, again, it's not something that's gonna bend that little, that little um, metal bit just to, you know, just something like this to push down. You just want it to be 
something that'll that'll catch the metal and push it down. Not not too big, not too small. So there we go. Bearing changing easy. Do you guys have any other questions about bearing? Mm. Yeah. The, <laughs> Totally. I can just, I'll try with the screwdriver right now. So um, <laughs> screwdriver, you can sometimes, this one isn't a flathead, but yeah, if you have a flathead, you can kind of pry it that way. Okay. Um, but again, I don't want to do anything too hard. I'm just trying to find that edge and pop it. Yeah, popped a little, but not all the way out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's coming slowly, slowly. Ta -da! So same, same. And then I'll use this guy to push it back in. No problem. Yeah. Some people do it using an axle too, but that always feels kind of like it's going to bend the bearing. Um, oh, like actually just like put the bearing down and then the wheel down. Yeah, I mean, you could. Like you back right now. Oh. I can probably do it these. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, you could use the axle. Yeah, you can absolutely use the axle in that same kind of way to just leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see it. You can you can do it. You can pop it up this way, it seems like. Yeah. Like, I feel like I can get that to work, but you might, yeah, it does seem a little easier to bend the bearing on that yeah. than that one. Yeah, just because, like, like you're up here and you're using. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah, totally. Exactly. You got to get, get the right spot. Perfect. So I usually use this guy. Yeah. So it's a lot like what you can use, but it's like it's from the bone sparing people. So you press the little button guy down, which makes those guys go in. Mm -hmm. And then stick it in, and then you should be able oh. to pull it out. But this is these wheels are the oh, ones where it gets stuck. Well I don't know why these hubs just don't want to let go. Oh, that's there. a nice tool. I like that. Why I have to use the axle. Oh, okay. but yeah, yeah. It, um, I like it a lot most of the time, and then it's good for popping it back in. Yeah, I feel like with tools, everybody's got their, their little special <laughs> favorites so too. Cool. You know, like everybody's <laughs> skate setup and everybody's toolbox is a little bit different. Um, they keep it back in the yeah, these are these wheels do not like to have the bar shape. Yeah, some of them are harder, like, uh, they're not as popular anymore. But, um, some of the derby wheels used to have aluminum hubs, yeah. which are just totally unforgiving because you're stuffing a steel bearing into yeah. aluminum, <laughs> right? So, like, yeah. they can't, I don't think you can buy them anymore, but oh. I got them like a year ago. They're, they're really pretty color, though, they're, they're great. Them. Yeah, and that happens all the time too. I definitely have wheels in my wheel bin that, that you can't buy anymore, but they don't even work the way, like wheels Wheels are something that just, they're a consumable really, like like they're made of plastic and they just get harder the, lo the longer you keep them. So, um, I mean, you don't really ever have to change your wheels. Just know that like if they start out soft, the older they get, they're gonna get harder. Yeah, yeah, it's just how, it's just how plastic kind of goes, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh yeah. yeah, here you go. Here you go. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Or oh, I got screwdrivers or like all kinds of things in there. Whatever you need. Oh, Susie Q also loves the tri tool. Good job, Susie Q. Everybody loves this tri tool. It's great. Yeah, that's so easy. <laughs> hey. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I'm pretty sure I got this from Roller Girl for like five bucks. So pretty, pretty cheap one. Pretty good. Pretty good. This is good on all my other wheels. I will vouch for it. It's very good on dummy wheels and all my other oh, yeah, but the radar pops for some reason. You to push it out too, eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that guy just for pushing oh, yeah, it out okay. and then that for putting it together. Yeah. Not bad. Um, toe stops. Toe stops and toe guards. Um, unless you guys have more questions about wheel bearing. Nope. Okay. Awesome. Well, oh, wait. I have a question. Like, yeah. so there's all these different types of bearings. Mm -hmm. um, what makes one better? Um, so they get more expensive, sort of the more durable they are. Okay. So like bone, bones, reds are steel bearings and you pay $50 for them because they have been the standard for like decades. There are cheaper bearings, 
that will perform just as well. So I love Bones Reds, but it's because I've skated them forever. Um, but I, you can get a very similar bearing for like 30 or 40 bucks sometimes too. Um, I know there's also ceramic bearings, uh, which then you get considerably more expensive. I think they're closer to $100 for a set, but they're basically indestructible. So like ceramic bearings, if you're skating them indoors and you're cleaning them regularly will last for your lifetime, right? So there's something that, yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're made made to last forever. So, you know, performance performance tools but you pay you pay the money for the performance stuff um i have never skated uh ceramic bearings myself but i'm pretty sure roller girl has so she can answer all your questions i don't know if there's any actual speed difference between uh the steel bearings and the ceramic ones but yeah how do i know what size of bearing i need I know, like, so I believe they're all nine millimeter, except some of the fancy European ones. Let me just let me just ask Dr. Google right here. Eights and sevens. I read a lot of Ah. Because I know like my other skates, they were like, oh no, you need these ones. I was like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Yes. Oh, the yeah, the bore, the yeah. so the bore, so the inside is eight millimeters. Um, the height is seven millimeters. I don't know why I was grabbing that in my brain, but uh, yes. So the so most roller skate bearings are eight millimeter. There are some very rare, and the, and this would be they would be def, different plates than I've shown you today. Some of the European roller figure skating plates, I believe, will have a different size. Um, so I know that Roller Girl does sell two sizes of bearings, um, but I think even on the website, it's like, if you don't know what size bearings you need, you need eight millimeter of bearings, right? Like, it, it, again, performance, performance sort of tools, um, specifically for that sport, I believe, right? I don't know a lot about the roller figure skating. I just admire it when I, when I see it on the YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and and actually, it's the, exactly the same size. So, so skate skateboard bearings have uh, uh, the bore is also eight millimeters. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of, in the early days. So back when Roller Girl was starting in the early two thousands, I know that she skated uh, some skateboard wheels on her roller skates just because they're the same size, and uh, there was a diff a, a greater variety at that time of skateboard wheels than there were roller skate wheels. Um, but yeah. Now that derbies happened again, we have all of the variety of wheels from all of the roller skate companies. We have lots to choose from there. Um, oh, so, what, what the Apex? I got the Apex five. So that I believe is about how fast the bearings are. So again, that's about speed. So let me just again ask Doctor Doctor Google. <laughs> the Doctor Google. Well, I'm here. Um, <laughs> ABEC bearing rating. Yes, it is a bearing rating. Um, ABEC rating system uses odd numbers as classification ratings. The five distinct classifications are arranged in ascending order of tolerance. Um, yeah, so we're, so this gets into really specific bearing stuff, which is not specific to like gate bearings, but would be like other kinds of bearings as well so for cars and bikes and uh, oh, wow. so it's it's like so bearings like all the bearings so it's probably something that like actually like between like three and five yeah i yeah 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 i i i that is a question i defer the answer to roller girl okay. <laughs> on the website like things come with apex five or apex seven or what is that yeah yeah so i mean if it's about tolerance again that would be about speed so like so like so like I'm just thinking about physics, uh, and I'm sure that's where it comes from. So, um, yeah, I don't know if the lower numbers mean faster bearings or the higher number <laughs> means faster bearings. So, so again, Dr. Google didn't help us with that one, but you can uh, ask our friends at Roller Girl. I'll do a deep dive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. And then come back to the video and post them. No, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have a lot to, to talk about as far as toe guards. I mean, we did already talk about how we have the bell toe stops and um, these guys that come with a nut and these, these guys that just screw in with the um, Allen key. Um, 
size is basically a preference thing, right? You see I have the giant fuck off toe stuff because I'm a derby person and we spend a lot of time on this kind of a tripod. So we spend a lot of time, both feet, these are oh, the same foot, but you know what I mean? Both feet uh, bracing. And so we need a lot of surface area for that stop. We do, I mean, derby has a lot of speed change as well. So going from slow to fast and fast to slow, uh, having big giant toe stop helps with that. Um, but there's also a lot of like walking around on them. So that's helpful for that. Um, if you have ones that have, some of these have like a rounded edge on them, it's a little harder for walking, um, but you can get some sort of with less surface area, a grippier stock with those ones because the shape of the round on it. Um, so they all have sort of different uses. I guess my only real caution is if you're gonna take your toe stops out, like some folks do no toe stop November, the real thing. Um, to just practice your edge work. Um, just make sure you get some toe plugs to go in there. Um, they're like five or six bucks. It's just like a piece of colored plastic that goes in there. I mean, it just prevents dirt and stuff from getting in there because you don't want like one single rock getting in there and then like ruining the inside, right? So like, yeah, especially if you're skating outside with no, with no um, toe stops, get those toe guards in there because you don't want any dirt or debris getting up into the into the, the nice hole that it scrolls, screws into there. Um, why are some of them slanted? Like this one has a front and a back. Ah, yeah. And then others are flat. Oh yeah, and then this one, yeah, mine has, yeah. A, mine has a slant. Um, again, preference. I know mine tend to actually wear down in this way too, so the slant gets greater. Because I tend to use this edge so that slant improves as, as um, I'm wearing down my toe stop. Um, yeah, I don't specifically know why it slants. Probably just to get a different angle here. So it'll give you a different angle for something uh, there. Um, I like to have my toe stop so you'll see like if this is the ground, there's maybe like a fifth's worth of space or less. So like that's fairly low. Yeah, not even, it's like four fingers. Um, so yeah, so I really, you, when you're adjusting a toe stop, you don't really want, so like if you're using it for walking and you're using it for that agility stuff, you're really using the toe stop and these two front wheels, right? Like that is the spot that you're pivoting from and walking around on. Um, so like you just don't want it too high, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Because if it gets too high, then you're sort of reaching and, and those wheels are no longer touching the ground and giving you that extra stability. So. That's about that for height. Um, I love toe guards too. I, especially for my outdoor skates, this is my outdoor setup. Um, toe guards will save the front of your, so these are about 15 years old, these skates. Uh, and I've skated them on rough asphalt that whole time. So the reason that they still have toes at the front is because I've had toe guards on the whole time. You can see the toe guard is taking uh, the brunt of, of, of uh, the mess from the asphalt there. Um, these were these were hand painted for me uh, by my friend Toxic Cherry. Thank you, Cherry. Um, so most of the toe guards actually are like handmade stuff. Like you find lots of the best one on Etsy. Not sure where you guys got those ones. I think even yeah, I think even some of the ones Roller Girl orders. She orders from somebody on Etsy. On Etsy. Um, oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah, I really, I really like how these ones cover the. Those are really yeah, nice. yeah, it really, really like covers the, the covers the front really nicely for sure. Is there a specific size that you're looking at? Like, like how Thank do you? you. I, oh, I, to I thought about ordering and then they like then a different <laughs> size. And I'm like, oh, um, yeah, I mean, there's there. It's just they're all so different. Um, so this one is really just a flap of leather. So this one doesn't have any contouring like those ones. So it doesn't go all the way around the toe. This is a flat piece of leather with a hole here and then holes wherever I'm comfortable lacing it. Um, I like to look at toe guards before I buy them. So I've never bought some online. Um, but I think most of the places that do sell them online will let you return them as well. Um, I, yeah, I don't think there is specific sizes for them. It's more about like color or shape or what looks nice on your skates uh, for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the only other thing about skates that we haven't talked about is laces, but there's not a lot of talk, 
to talk about there. I mean, you can get some laces that are better uh, for asphalt, some of them that are like indestructible. Um, I say that in quotations because, you know, somebody's <laughs> always going to destruct them anyways. Somebody's always going to be able to do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Any more questions? You guys want me to take part anything else? I have a question yeah. about lace. Mm -hmm. I've just seen some of those places have like the cutouts in them. Sort of yeah. Things, like the same like the acrylic plates, but just... Um, I think it's uh, with the cutout. What do you mean? I don't have them, but like they have, it's like this center part is. Oh, like it's in it a, uh, like a slide block. So, no, so what you can get, not the slide, slide block. block. No, it's like the actual plate. I don't know. It's like, like that. I'm pretty sure they're nylon, but they might not be. I, I've only seen them in like videos and photos. Yeah, I am not have, sure. Like, I mean. Yeah, they have like triangle cutouts in the oh. in this space. Oh, yeah, I think I have seen that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. If they and I haven't done any research. I know they're not <laughs> this. Maybe, yeah. And I know this is a nylon plate. And I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're aluminum. Is that what like? They, they could be. There's some really pretty colored aluminum ones, too. Yeah, yeah, totally. Like, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure I could have spent more money on Venus plates if I wanted to, like, make them gold or, like, blue metallic or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you can spend lots of money. I mean, uh, if you go to RollerCon too, like, highly recommend going to RollerCon uh, because all of the skate companies go there and show off all of their stuff, right? So you can go there and like. I mean, I mean, they do, they do have, they do have it at the cheapest time of year in Vegas, right? Because you're going in the middle of summer when it is the cheapest cheap, and that that was on purpose. That was like. Trish and Ivana uh, planned that on purpose for us, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I remember seeing plates there, though, that were literally made out of the same thing as the space shuttle, but, you know, you're going to spend $2,000 on your plate. It's like, who even buys them? Yeah. Some, some other kind of titanium alloy. So it was, uh, yeah. yeah. Who, who buys that? Not me. Yeah, I mean, but aren't we professional skaters? I get paid to skate now. Does that make me a professional skater? <laughs> I did get pretty expensive skates, too. I mean, uh, <laughs> they were pricey, but I love them. Um, do you guys have sock preferences? You have a strong feeling about socks? I like a taller sock, that's for sure. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Holding yeah. Ankle. I recently became a barefoot skater, and I'm loving it. After 15 years of, of loving socks. So I don't know if it's the new boots or just a uh, beautiful floor we have here, whatever it is. So. <laughs> I, I tell you, like, when I bought them, I love the fact they were like super like soft and like squishy in the inside of yeah. my foot. And I'm like, oh, these are so nice. Yeah, yeah. But now like I find that I'm constantly having to um, tighten them. Because oh. I'm skating, I feel like I'm... Like, oh, like they've loosened off as, as, as you've had them. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. definitely something that can happen. So yeah. I know specifically like Rydell boots, like these old, old 15-year-old ones that I have, um, they tend to loosen off more in the heel. And that's something I can feel in these skates now is I just, there's no way to get the heel as tight as I used to be able to. So I can almost feel my heel moving around in there. Which is why they're my outdoor set. I, you know, I take them on the, on the trail skating. They're not for anything precision. Um, but yeah. Have seen things yeah. where you can change the way you skate? Oh yeah, I've seen those. Oh, they have like yeah. kind of like a breakdown of like, oh, okay. if they're too tight in their toe, or there's yeah, like a you feel like loose things. Yeah, okay. or it's like you have like wider arches, and you mm -hmm. want to like, yeah, adjust the. Okay. Oh, and there's the definitely. So I do a thing like doubling up on my ankle, not like yeah. around, but. Like yeah and that's absolutely what i do with these ones i can actually show you guys so like this plate has this this nice little ridge right here so the way that i actually lace these now is so i have two sets of laces also also because i like my toes to be to have room to move a little but i like this part of my skate really tight um, and the solaris boot just does that already like the way that it's put together um, but this is what I've found that I like for, for derby or outdoor for these kind of boots is being able to have loose in the toes and then tight here. Um, but what I do to help the heel lock is when I'm lacing them up, I lace under that right there. And that actually really helps with, with keeping the heel lock. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, 
No, no, not at all. Because I mean, it'll be really super tight. Like I can put it on my foot right now. We got time for that. We got time for that. Throw it on my foot. Hey, yeah, it definitely wasn't. This is this is the knowledge. This is the knowledge you get for when you come. <laughs> Boop. We're just doing some content things over here. So, so that's so that's how that ends up. It's so so it's really nice and tight, and it does keep my heel nice and tight. I'll show off for the online. So we lace it around and that helps helps it keep in place there. Do my can can leg. <laughs> um, so that was something new that I actually just figured out like in the past couple of years is like I'd had these skates for 10 years already and had been dealing with the heel slip a little. Like you definitely notice it in derby when you're coming around the corner. For sure. You feel the like the heel slip out to the side just a little. Um, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. That might mean that they are a little too loose for you now, then, if you can fit a big fat wool sock in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, play with some lacing stuff. Play with some lacing stuff. See what you can do. We tried wax laces. Yeah. I find I can get them. Oh yeah, they go tighter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The originally just came in these little bags. I think like a sock lace. Yeah. Yeah. I replaced in both pairs. Yeah. Yeah. They can like get nice and. Yeah. They don't move. All right. I think I'm just gonna end the stream because we're done with questions. Thanks everyone for watching. I, I think we had like three or four of you at least at one time. So thanks. Thanks for joining us. Uh, come back again. Uh, I think in about a month, we're going to do another live stream. Uh, so we're not going to be back next Tuesday, but we'll be back some Tuesday. Thanks for joining us. <laughs>